Hello, it's Carolyn Ladowski here from MTH Fast Support Australia. Today on our Facebook group, we're actually going to spend some time talking about how you start supplementing with uh, for people with the MTHFR and methylation issues because it's one of the questions that I get asked the most so I thought we would address it first. So the key things we need to look at is how do we actually support your cofactors? So we need B1, 2, 3, 5 and 6 to do that. B1 is really important for your choline synthesis. It's a cofactor for nerve conduction. We need it for our hydrochloric acid and it's a cofactor for the ALDH or the acetyl L aldehyde genes. We need it for red blood cells. We need it for our energy cycle. B2 riboflavin, as you know, is a cofactor for the MTHFR gene, so it will help stabilize it. So we need that, um, particularly it's important for our Krebs cycle and our coenzyme um, for form, which is FAD. B3 nicotinamide, really important for our energy cycle, a key uh, cofactor for the AHCY gene. It helps modulate inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 6 and 8 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. B5 calcium pantothenate, uh, really important in synthesis of acetylcholine in antibody production. It's a major cofactor for our AANAT gene, which converts serotonin to melatonin. And of course, B6. So B6, um, really key cofactor, particularly for our CBS pathway. Uh, we need that for over 100 enzyme catalyzed reactions in the body. And biotin, cofactor for fatty acid synthesis. And again, we need it for pyruvate and our energy cycle. So step one is to get the cofactors in place. So we have developed a product called Starter B which has all those B1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. So that's the first place you start. You have a cofactor. You don't have anything with methylfolate in it to start because you actually need to support these pathways first before you start putting in heavy metals. The second thing you need to do is pick your B12. So B12 you may or may not know there's quite a few forms and it does get confusing as to what B, B12 is best for you, and I'm going to do a session next in the next couple of weeks on that. So B, B12, if we look at the forms, there's cyanocobalamin, which is the synthetic form. It's very much like folic acid is to the folate group. So we don't really want to be using the synthetic forms. So hydroxocobalamin is the precursor to our, our active B12s. Our active B12s are methylcobalamin, which is our, I look at it that as our brain B12, great for our um, neurotransmitter synthesis and our brain function and neurological function. And adenosyl is our energy B12 that we need. Now there are key genes that would indicate which one you should be using. If you do have problems with methyl products, then you may well be better off with the hydroxocobalamin because the body will then metabolize into the key pathways, um, either methyl or adenosyl. And we're going to be spending some time in the next few weeks really getting down to the nitty gritty of what you need and what sort of B12 is best for you. Same as we will for folate and how to start that. So that's step two, pick the B12. Now, as you know, B12 is critical, particularly in vegetarians and vegans or people with gut issues, because without enough B12, we won't be able to use our methyls. And that's when we can get what we call a methyl block. So we have to make sure B12 is in place. And I talked about gut issues. So people who have low hydrochloric acid or have a history of B12 deficiency, then probably a chewable or even an injection is going to be the best form because you will bypass gut function. And that's why all our B12s are in chewable forms because it will be metabolized into that mucosa and bypass gut function because so many people have a bad gut. So step one, start a B and, and your cofactors. Step two is pick your B12. Step three, we'll be introducing methyls but not until such time that you've addressed key issues. So for example, 
If you do have gut issues, you do need to address them first. If you are eating badly, you need to improve your diet and we will talk about diet. Three, if you are not getting enough sleep, you do need to make sure that you are getting sleep. So your environment has a major part to play in how the, this methylation cycle is addressed. And methyls may be a great next step, the third step for, for many of you, but others you may have reactions. So we're going to talk about methyls in a couple of weeks coming up, but I look forward to um, talking to you all today on the Facebook page. Um, so please join us on MTHFR Support Australia Facebook and we'll, I'll also put a PDF up so that you can um, have a look at, at what we've said today. So I look forward to talking to you and I will see you in a couple of weeks as well. Thank you. Bye.